All right, uh, welcome back to another video. Today, I actually just wanna talk about some updates that I have made to my DCLI tool. So basically, if you haven't watched my previous video, I'm trying to make a tool that's kind of inspired by NixOS to be able to declaratively like manage your uh, packages and um, add different modules uh, to your system to be able to you know, enable things, you know, fairly quickly without, you know, a lot of, a lot of intervention. And so that way you can like, uh, install, you know, this on new computers and like kind of manage your computers and the packages from a repo to be able to, you know, kind of have that same like NixOS feel on a Arch based uh, distribution. So I have made some updates. Um, I did switch from JSON to YAML. Someone in the comments had actually mentioned uh, to switch to that, which I felt was a, a good move because it makes it feel more, I guess, Nix like to be able to like, add comments and be able to really update your um, YAML files accordingly. So yeah, so I, I did make that up. And then I also did add uh, version pinning. You actually can pin your uh, packages to a specific version. Um, you can do that through the DCLI tool or in the actual uh, YAML file for whatever, you know, host that you have um, enabled in your system, which I'll show here in a second. And then I also added an option to generate a lock file to lock all of your versions to a specific uh, track. So that way you're not updating any of your files. Um, this might be good for like a server or in general, if you want to lock everything to a specific file and not update, do run a uh, update on your system. And then the DCLI update does respect the actual version constraints automatically. So you don't have to worry about, you know, it just updating your, your, everything, you know, that you want. That way it, it will not update you know, certain packages that you do have that um, enabled for. And then the modular system makes it, you can reuse modules like gaming and other ones that I have created that you can easily install, you know, new things. And with the modular system, what I'm trying to kind of go for is not only for your own system, but other people can create modules and then you can, you know, use their modules to enable things on your system. And that can even go as far as like dot files, you know, to enable in your system or uh, just different like uh, packages. Like I created a uh, controller support package that has an install script for the different UDEV rules after you have all of the different packages that you need for it installed. So, you know, things like that. And I also created one for like lazy vim and I'll show those here in a second, but yeah, so a uh, different modular system, host specific, you know, uh, configurations maintain different packages, you know, per host. So if I reinstall, you know, my system on another one and I use the same host name, then it'll automatically, you know, have those packages available to me when I do a sync. Um, you do have automatic backups. You have to have time shift uh, installed and enabled for that to work. And then um, we do have conflict detection, you know, prevents enabling different uh, modules based on what modules you do have enabled. So if you do want to have one not be able to enable if you, you know, actually do enable one, um, you can do so. And then the post install scripts that I was talking about, uh, for instance, with the UDEV rules set up um, is there as well. And then, so yeah, so um, to install it, you just, you know, run this install script right here, installs it. And then for you to create the actual like arch config, you just run DCLI in it. And then what that does is actually creates, it'll create this file here. So this file will uh, by default just have packages and then it'll have your host um, that you just created automatically there. And then it won't have any modules in here except for the example module um, and then you can start creating your own modules as you as you want to you can also install my configuration if you want to so you do deselect in it and then dash bd and that'll install uh, the exact one that you see here with the uh, modules and stuff that i have enabled so and keep in mind like the all of these are work in progress so if there are issues you know do it at your own risk but yeah you can you can automatically just grab mine from there as well and then like i said you do, we do have some ver uh, version pinning options um, so to pin them, you just in the packages, instead of just, you know, listing them in a simple format, you would list them with the name and the package version that you want. Um, there is an actual, you know, command to get those versions. Um, so if you want to know what the version is currently for, you know, Firefox, you can do D slide versions, uh, Firefox and then get that version and then, you know, create that, uh, pin within your option here. You also can do DCLI pin and then the, the application that you want to pin, um, that'll do it as well. So. So yeah, so that's the the pinning options, and then declarative packaging is just you know listing your packages uh, based on a specific module or for a specific host, and so that way you can install them when you do a DCLI sync. Um, it'll automatically install the packages that you have you know now updated, and then to do that you would you can list all of the modules and then enable the one, disable the one. You can do a, an actual sync, install all missing packages, and it'll search for 
Packages are already on your system, so it won't run those again. And then also there's the time shift backup options, which it'll do a uh, automatic backup every time you run DCLI sync. Um, so similar to like a kind of Nick Swift's feel where everything's backed up every time you do um, a rebuild. So it kind of kind of mimicking that a little bit within you know this package system and then you can manually back up and restore um, as well. D DCLI self update is just to update the actual DCLI itself so when I make changes and stuff it'll automatically pull down from the repo and then put that into your um, local bin um, for your system-wide uh, DCLI installation. And then uh, for the modular system as you can see here um, it, it is pretty straightforward for you know, creating the modules, like I said. So when you do create a module, you do have, you know, different packages, conflicts, and then install hook. So it's nice. So I have like this lazy vim one that I have not installed onto this system yet. So I can show you that real here real quick. Um, so if I go over here and do DCLI um, status, it'll show, you know, the host name, the desktop that I'm on currently, and then the uh, modules that I have, you know, installed already. So I have the controller support one gaming and my main apps. So I made a you know main apps one. So when I install it on to a new machine, it'll automatically install all of these apps um, onto the machine. And then I do have one for Mango WC. And then I actually put all of my dot files in this, and then created an install script for that. So that way I can install my Mango installation anywhere. So if you install the actual Arch configuration from mine with the DCLI um, in it and then dash BD, you'll get all these. And then I have a um, Neary one as well to install my Neary configuration. So it'll install all the dot files and the scripts and everything. Um, they're both using DMS. Um, it'll theme the DMS and everything for you as well. So yeah, so that's how you would install that. Uh, but for instance, the lazy vim one. So if I want to install that, as you can see, I don't even have NeoVim installed right now. So um, NeoVim is not working, uh, but if I do, uh, DCLI module enable lazy vim. Um, so as you can see, the, the module is now um, enabled and I can just run DCLI sync in, in order to you know sync that with my system. So if I run DCLI sync, it's loading configuration. So now it says I have you know seven packages that need to be installed and I can run that real quick. So go ahead and run, put in my password. And then as you can see, um, the backup has been you know created and now it's going to install all these packages. So just go ahead and hit yes like you normally would. And then so I went ahead and installed all those packages um, and then ran this post install um, subscription or subscription uh, script. So that way uh, it actually enabled you know everything uh, for me. And then so now I need to open up a new terminal. But now if I run, um, you can see here now it's actually launching the uh, in and installing uh, LazyVim. So it's a very easy way to be able to configure this and um, you know have that up and running in, in no time <laughs> um, instead of having to actually configure NeoVim and then you know do all the different things you need to do to, to enable LazyVim. Um, this install script did, basically just did all that for me. So that's kind of like the, the main focus that I'm kind of trying to make this for is for other people to create different modules and be able to share those with other people and then make it very easy to install different things um, onto your system. Um, so same thing with the, you know, the controller support um, option. I just enabled it and then it runs the script and then, you know, I'm good to go. So yeah, so you guys want to try it out, um, you know, definitely go ahead and, and do so. But like I said, is it very in the early stages, kind of beta um, right now, trying to get everything figured out. So you may run into some issues here and there and it'll constantly be kind of updating over the next coming weeks. So you can do the DCLI uh, self-update to get the new features. So yeah, so if you've enjoyed my content, um, definitely consider uh, subscribing and liking the video. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.